Momentum. You probably already know that the momentum of a body is the product of its mass and of its velocity. But do you have a feel of what it really means? To be honest, I don't like the term momentum. I much prefer the term used in France, quantité de mouvement, which translates in English as amount of motion or quantity of motion. Let me illustrate. Imagine a motorway with traffic. All cars are identical. They all have the same mass and are going at 100 kph. Here, the system is made of all the cars on the motorway. And the momentum of that system is the sum of the momenta of the individual cars. Now imagine another motorway, but this time with a lot of traffic. All cars on this motorway are identical to those on the first motorway, and they are all going at the same velocity, 100 kph. When looking at the two motorways, which system of cars exhibits the largest amount of motion? The first one or the second one? Well, it's obvious, right? It's the second one, the busy one. So increasing the number of cars, thus the mass of the system, while keeping all the velocities constant, will increase the amount of motion associated with the system. In other words, increase the mass of a moving system and you increase its momentum. Now keep this in mind and let's move on to another example. Again, let's consider two motorways. On the first one, the system is defined by one car, a beetle driving at 100 kph. On the second one, you also have one single car. It's a small Porsche driving faster at 300 kph. Both cars have the same mass. In your opinion, which system has the most amount of motion? Yeah, it's obvious again. The Porsche has more motion because it is moving faster than the Beetle. So for two systems of equal mass, the one going faster exhibits a larger quantity of motion, a larger momentum. This is why momentum is proportional to both mass and velocity, and also why you can see momentum of the system as the quantity of motion associated with the system. Momentum has mathematical properties that are very practical for solving problems in physics. If you have a body moving in space and there are no force acting on it, well, there is no reason for the motion of the body to change. The magnitude and direction of its velocity will stay the same. There is no reason either that the mass of the body will change. So in that case, you can say that the momentum of the body will not change, it will stay the same. We say that the momentum of the body is conserved. If on the other hand you apply an unbalanced force on the object, according to the second law of Newton, the object will accelerate, thus its velocity will change, and so will its momentum. What's important here is that if a system is not subjected to an unbalanced external force, its quantity of motion will always stay the same. This is what we call conservation of momentum. Let's see in practice how we can use this idea. But before we dive into how to use conservation of momentum in order to solve problems in physics, let's remind ourselves what type of mathematical quantity momentum is. Imagine an object of mass m, and it's moving, it's got a velocity v. m, the mass, is just a number. v has a magnitude, which is a speed, how fast the object is moving, but also a direction, it's going this way. Therefore, v is a vector. Now we know that momentum is mass multiplied by velocity.
If I multiply a scalar by a vector, I get a vector. Momentum is a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. Now let's consider a system of two objects, A and B. What is a system? You hear this word a lot. A system is just when you associate different bodies together and you consider the whole group. I'm going to consider these two objects of mass MA and MB. And they form a system S. If I want to find the mass of the system, well, it's easy, I just add the mass of the constituents. So it's the mass of the system here is mass A plus mass B. Simple. I suppose that A and B are moving. They have momentum. So we have PA, and suppose I put PB that way. If I want to find the momentum of the system, I need to make the sum of the momenta of the constituents of the system. So in our case, we get PA plus PB as vectors. As vectors, these are vectors. You cannot just add the magnitudes. You need to add them as vectors. So if I want to draw the vector corresponding to the momentum of system S, I'll stop here. I draw PA, and tilt it, I put PB there, put vectors, and I obtain here the momentum of the system. Let's do this in one dimension. I consider an object A here and an object B here. Let's suppose B is moving this way with a momentum PB, and A is moving that way with a momentum PA. If I want to find out the momentum of the system S, which forms the two objects, formed by the two objects, I will have PS equals PA plus PB. But I'm making a vector sum, so I need to define an axis with a positive direction. Let's consider positive direction this way. Now, if I want to find the magnitude of the momentum of the system, I see PA is in the negative direction, so it's going to be minus PA, and PB is in the positive direction, so it's going to be plus PB. Because momentum is a vector, when you deal with it in physics problems, don't forget to deal with it like a vector. When you add momenta together, don't forget it's a vector. They find some axis. If you forget it's a vector, then you might make mistakes like forgetting the negative sign. Stuff like this. And, well, do you have trouble applying mathematical tools to fix problems? If you do, I highly recommend you check my course, Mathematics for Physics. I published it on Udemy and Skillshare, and I will post some links in the description. What does this course deal with? Well, it's divided in three sections. The first section is Algebra for Physics. It shows you how to rearrange equations, you know, and shows you lots of tips on how to do it fast and accurately. The second section is Vectors for Physics. Well, it deals with this, how to add vectors, what is a vector, how to use it in physics problems. And third section is Trigonometry for Physics. Now that is everything with angles, cosines, sines, stuff like this, that you see a lot in physics. Okay, let's move on, and let me show you how to use conservation of momentum to solve problems in physics. Now, in order to demonstrate how to use conservation of momentum to solve problems in physics and find stuff, let me present to you Bob and Alice. Alice loves to go skating. So now she's skating, right? So put some skates here. I hope you admire my drawing qualities. And I'm going to put Bob here. 
He's skating too, because Alice invited him. Bob and Alice are on the skating wing. Alice having a mass of 50 kilograms. Bob is a little heavier, it's a guy, so 70 kilograms. Alice is skating towards Bob with a velocity VA of 5 meters per second, while Bob is also going towards Alice with a velocity VB of 10 meters per second. Obviously, they will crash. But Bob and Alice are very good friends, so they will hold hands. So let me draw this again. That's Alice holding hands with Bob after having crashed into each other. Here, we want to find the final velocity they have after the crash. In what direction are they going? and with what speed. So for this, I will consider the system of Alice and Bob before the crash and after the crash. And on this system, I will apply the principle of conservation of momentum, meaning that the momentum of the system before will be equal to the momentum of the system after the crash. The forces that, a and B, that Alice and Bob are experiencing are inside the system, so these are not external forces. There are no external forces on the system because there's no friction. So we can apply conservation momentum. Why don't you try? Pause the video, give yourself a few minutes, and try to find out what would be the final velocity V. As you can see, for clarity, I replaced Alice and Bob by balls. I want to calculate the initial momentum of the system formed by these two balls. So the momentum of the system will be the sum of the momenta of the constituents of the system, but these are vectors. It's a vector addition, so I need to define an axis, a positive axis. But well, let's consider it positive this way. Now, I can calculate the magnitudes. By removing the arrows, I realize that momentum of A is this way, it's positive. And that of B is this way, it's negative. And I can replace P by MV now. Let's calculate now the final momentum of the system. So, it would be Pf. The system now is made of the two balls which are clung to each other. They form one single object of mass, Ma plus Mb. And because they are the same object, they go at the same velocity. Now here, I can easily remove the arrow here because it's not an addition. V is just collinear with P. So they have the same sign. And this is now that the magic of conservation of momentum is going to show up. This equal to that, because this is equal to that. So let's write this. MA VA minus MB VB equals MA plus MB V. If I rearrange this, I can write down, and I'm going to plug in numbers. MAVA minus MBVB over MA plus MB equals V. So that was 50 by 5 minus 70 by 10 divided by 50 plus 70. Let me calculate this. I find minus 3.75 meters per second. So the magnitude of the velocity they have after the crash is 3.75 meters per second, and the direction is that way.
The notion of momentum is quite straightforward. It characterizes the amount of motion, the quantity of motion of a body or of a system of bodies. And it is subject to a conservation law. And this conservation law is a cornerstone of physics. Conservation of momentum allows to calculate and deduce information that otherwise can be difficult to measure. For example, conservation of momentum is at the heart of experimental particle physics. Yes, some particles are not directly detectable. We cannot see them. They decay too quickly. But, by analyzing the momentum of the decay products, we can deduce, using conservation of momentum, we can deduce information about this short-lived particle. But that topic will be for another video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this episode useful to you and I also hope that now you are a master at manipulating momentum. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps and it motivates me to make new videos. But in the meantime, I've got to go now. So I'll see you soon in another episode of Physics Made Easy. Bye.